software estimates have never worked and will never. Now, this is very interesting in the sense that the man's a CEO, right? You you typically don't think of this in the CEO role. So I want to I want to hear this. By the way, I think this is a very healthy, a very healthy outlook in software. Uh, since the dawn of computing, humans have sought to estimate how long it takes to build software. And for just as long, they've consistently failed. Estimating even medium-sized projects is devilishly difficult. And estimating large projects is virtually impossible. Is Starfield mentioned right now? Is that what we're hearing? Yet the industry keeps insisting that the method, or is this GTA 6, that hasn't worked for 60 years will definitely work on this next project. If we all just try a little harder, it's the definition of delusional. I thought it was the definition of insanity. Isn't that the whole like definition of insanity is trying the same thing over and over again, but expecting a different result? Same, same. Delusional. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess delusional is, uh, it could probably also fall in there. Uh, splitting hairs here. Oh, of course we're splitting hairs here. What do you think we are? Okay, this is a software engineering stream. <laughs> And it does depend on what you mean by work. That is true. It depends on what you mean by work. You can sometimes land within like a month on a smaller project. On a mid to large size project, you could probably land within a year. Anything beyond that is just crazy. I was going to mention WordPress, but DHH beat me to it. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, the fundamental problem is that as soon as a type of software development becomes so routine that it would be in, uh, that would be possible to estimate, it turns into a product or a service you can just buy rather than build. I think that's true. Very few people need to build vanilla content management systems or e-commerce stores today. They just use WordPress or Shopify or one of the alternatives. Thus, the bulk of software development is focused on novel work. I see what he's saying. I, I do see what he's saying. I don't think the bulk of software development is, is, is on novel work in the sense that, well, I mean, I guess in some sense it's novel. Your CRUD app is different than someone else's CRUD app. Yes. Uh, it may not be novel, in the sense that someone else's code isn't fairly near identical. But I, th I see what he's saying, is that usually you're trying to build something new. You're not trying to build something that already exists very, very well. Meaning that typically you're not just trying to rebuild WordPress against WordPress. I, I think I generally see what he's saying. Uh, true, just like you said, if, you, if it doesn't need unit tests, your product probably sucks. Yeah, I mean, generally speaking, that if, if you don't need the right test to be able to write your, prod your product, you're probably not building anything that's, that's even interesting, right? You're just pasting other working services together, and that's that. There's nothing novel about your product. Uh, but the thing about novel work is that nobody knows exactly what it should look like until they start building. Agreed with this statement. I think you can... You could do all. You could live your entire life saying that you can pre-plan everything, but I just doubt it. Uh, for just as long as software industry has been failing to estimate the work, it's also been deluding itself into thinking that you can specify novel work up front and produce something people actually want. I like this. Uh, yet we've also tried that many times before, and nobody cared for the outcome because it invariably didn't end up solving the real problems. The ones you could only articulate after building half of a wrong solution, changing directions, then coming up with something better. Ooh, I love this. Oof, this describes every single time I've ever built software. I love that so much is that often you need to write something to understand the thing that was wrong. When I was writing the auto, uh, the auto doctor for gaming at Netflix, I had to build it once to realize that was the wrong thing we were focusing on. And it was until I built it that I, that I went, okay, hold on, undo it. Let's build something different. And the something different only came after I built most of a working but wrong solution. And a lot of hard parts about that is because what people say and what they want are so often different things. And what I mean by that is that in chat, if you were to ask chat right now, hey guys, do you prefer to me to, to read and talk about articles or to program? You'll get a lot of people be like, oh, the programming is the only thing I really want. Or some people be like, oh, the reading is the only thing I really want. But really what they watch is truly what they really, really want. That's actually the real interesting part about this whole thing is that a lot of people say, oh, I just want really technical content, yet they watch just dumb stuff on the internet. And you, you know that, that what you do versus what you say are very, very different. It's, uh, it's, it's like clickbait people hate, but it works. Yeah, it works because you keep clicking on it because what you want versus what you, what you say you want. All right, anyways, the solution is not to try harder, nor to hope that this time is somehow different. It's to change tactics, give up on estimates, and embrace the alternative method for making software by using budgets or appetites, so we can call them in our shape-up methodology. 
Interesting. Okay, so depending on what he means by budget, I'd have to read these other two to kind of maybe understand what he means by that. Couldn't we argue that a budget is no different than making estimations? Nope, it's not the same. Why is it, why is it not the same? Budget equals money. Yeah, 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 yeah. Budget equals money. Estim okay, 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 okay. Let's, let's, let's use your equation. So he said budget equals money. Estimation equals time. Time equals money. Therefore, estimation is budget. If you say you are willing to spend $1 million on this and it costs you $100,000 a month, what did you just do? Can you complete this project in 10 months or not? I did simple math there. I could have said $10, $1, right? You get the idea. It's so it's gambling. Yeah, it's gambling. Quick maths, quick maths. All right, I can fail to complete this project in 10 months. <laughs> now that's the attitude we need around here. That's project estimation, not estimating Jira tickets. Correct. Correct. I think that still runs into the same category. It turns out that programmers are actually surprisingly good at delivering great software on time. I normally, I, I, I tend to agree with a good portion of DHH takes. I don't know if I agree with this one. This, this uh, by the way, this could be a bias problem. And what I mean by the bias problem, hold on. If you leave the scope ocean, uh, okay, someone says to read the next sentence. True. If you leave this, uh, the scope open to negotiation during development. I can't tell if this is a truism or actually an insightful comment. Because the hard part, okay, so we're getting into this problem where budget is budget, time, or money. Okay, we're going to complete this in a million dollars, and we have two engineers. It's going to cost us $100,000 a month to make. Therefore, it's 10 months. Can you come back in 10 months and tell us if this is done? And then throughout the time process, you're able to reduce the amount of scope you have to work on. I, this, is what, this is what I'm hearing. This is, this is what I'm hearing is that you, have, you start off with a project, and you're willing to spend X amount on it. And as you start working on the project, you start completing it. You realize you can't complete all of it with X. So therefore, you say, let's change the scope to this and then make this really, really, really good with this little bit of change that we didn't foresee coming. But we can make this much, much better. I think that's what I'm reading. And then the scope only increases. It never decreases. It's not quite true. If this is the case, then I actually believe his statement. That's an acorn. Is that an acorn? I'm going to say something, Flip, you're going to probably have to take this out. Nope, not going to say it. Not going to say it. We're moving on. We're moving on. So I think the one thing that we're probably missing here is that you set your scope big, and you pretty much set an amount of time, even though they don't say time, they use the word budget, but you're, you're setting a time. And then you prune out things and focus on the core product, and you learn as you go. Like, I agree with that. Isn't that most software development anyways? You have to make choices on... I mean, this just sounds like a truism in some sense. Like, yeah, if you allow for the reduction of scope, then de then developers will deliver on time. I mean, yes, true. The The thing is, is it's this word that I'm, I'm really skeptical skeptical about, which is great software. I've, I've met a lot of shitty software. I've met very few great pieces of software. You're not going to get exactly what you asked for, but you wouldn't want that anyways, because what you asked for before you began building was based on the absolute worst understanding of the problem. I like it. I like that. Great software is the product of trade-offs and concessions made while making progress. That's how you cut with a grain of human nature. It's the core realization that has been driving us for decades at 37 Signals, and which has resulted in some wonderful products built by small teams punching way above their weight. We, we've incorporated it into ShapeUp, but whether you use a specific methodology or not, giving up on estimates can help you ship better and sooner. So I guess I, I, I this is something DHH said he's gonna he'll jump on stream, uh, which means actually in fact I believe he's back from his uh, time in Europe, so he can actually jump on stream here soon. And so I'll, I'll bother him and bring him up, and I'll ask more about this specific question right here because this is really. I'm trying to understand it, and I bet you it's because I haven't read the shape of methodology, which is probably something I need to understand in its in in itself. Uh, which I generally agree with with what like this picture. This picture just is how I like to develop myself, <laughs> right? Uh, but I, I would say that one thing that's kind of probably unique to DHH that's not unique to a lot of software is that having a relatively small team that's focused on a couple products, you tend to be able to punch way above your weight. And what I mean by that is use Google products. So many of them are frustrating because they just have this really, they have this huge problem of spreading out really big and just trying things for a while. 
and you just don't have that drive and it's not small and focused. I think people that tend to solve one problem really well build really good software. People that build many pro- or solve many things build horrible software. Do a few things better. Yeah, I think very. this is a more rarity, it feels like. Like X trying to become the everything app. It's really hard to do everything well. WhatsApp was incredible. They built one thing, right? They did it with, what, 30, 30 people total at WhatsApp, and they were handling billions of messages a, uh, an hour or some nonsense. Like, it was very, very, very interesting. That's survivorship bias. Is it? This is the problem. Because you can intuit certain aspects of life, right? Like, if I were to ask you, uh, here's a simple question. Are men taller than women? You probably can't name a single study that actually shows you the exact thing, but you can intuit the, the, the answer. You can go, oh, yeah, yeah, I've observed this generally speaking. And so it's the same thing with is building specific software well easier than building a lot of software? Well, you know, we can probably intuit that it is true. And so, yeah, see, and, and, I mean, this is like the classic one right here. I fear not a, a man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once but I fear the man who's practiced one kick 10,000 times. It's something like that. I've heard, I've heard that exact quote. It's a great quote, by the way. So I think that's, I, I do think that that's probably where the bias comes from in this article is that he's working with a very select group of people that have been working on a few products really, really well. And so when they add something, they're able to really like, they, they, they just have this pattern that really works well for them. And so thus they made, shape up, which must be their methodology. And I bet you that probably won't work at a lot of company. He would get mauled in UFC. Well, that's the real question is, would he get mauled in the UFC? So now we're going to do this flip. Now you're distracting this and now you have to edit this flip. Flip, you're going to have to edit this because of what you just did. The thing is, is that Bruce Lee existed in a different time period and he became the king at what he did. Would he still be that person or would he have adapted to the time? Because you got to remember that Bruce Lee adapted very, very heavily he was much more adapted to the environment in which fighting existed than anybody else. He actually took stuff and changed it and made it much, much different. So would he have been able to change and, 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 and be a revolutionary in the game? Probably. Bruce Lee was an adapter. Oh, yeah. He was very, 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 very good at it. Bro would have got walked down. I don't know if that's true because you're judging him. That's like saying Spartans would have got walked on by the, the American Revolutionary uh, uh, Army. Of course they would, because the Revolutionary Army had guns. It was a different time period. But if you would have taken those Spartans in their mentality, dropped them in with technology, who do you think would have won then? A hey, flip, edit all that stuff out. Companies each develop their own kind of... I mean, gen- generally, the, the, the culture at any company is just like a blob of process and and filth and stand-ups and annoyances and and constant measurements to make something quote unquote be delivered on time in which scope creep constantly happens the whims of various pms get thrown in all left and right and can be quite frustrating but then other companies do this in a completely different way and they find that they find great success now is the success the result of the people at the company or is the the success, the result of the process. And I've never really been able to understand or be able to actually separate out the two. I do think that you have to, that not all processes work. Like you can't just simply tell a group of interns, hey, you have one month, go try to build this software, check in with me in two weeks. Some interns, yes, you can. Some interns, no, you can't. Because there's there's like a filtering process, a gatekeeping that you have to have to be able to build that type of culture where you only hire people that are hyper-independent. People that you can go, okay, go, do, go, do, do. Talk to me in two weeks. Show me what you've gone. You know, And I think some people will live into that role. And I think some people just can't operate in that role. And I think modern education is a huge, huge inhibitor to that kind of mentality. Because modern education, of course, is going to be just teaching you to sit down, shut up, listen to what the teacher says, do what they exactly say. And then you go into the work world. And now they're saying, hey, Go do this, and you're like, okay, what are the steps? What do you want me to do? And it's just like, no, that's not, that's, that's not how the world is. The world is different than how you've been taught. I'm going to give you no direction. You discover the direction. You discover the problem. You fix the problem, and you make it. 
And that's why, I mean, I think generally, I think self-taught stuff is going to be really important. Education sucks. I wouldn't say education sucks. There's plenty of good things about education. A good example is even though you hated it, differential equations, Laplace transforms, the ability to foresee a solution in many, many steps, the ability to sit down and work on a problem for many, many hours was such a huge benefit to me in the long run. Because I was able to like learn how to hone in my energy on solving hard things and to be able to do it. I thought that was really, really good. I thought this was really good. And that's why AA thrives. I, I, don't, I don't think you're right. Um, I hate this idea of saying education's pure bad or education's pure good. There's good things and there's bad things. Are we talking about derivatives right now? <laughs> education doesn't suck. Teachers suck. Uh, getting an education in things you're not interested in sucks. Yes, true. That's all true. Like everything, it depends. Like a lot of things, it depends. Even it depends, it depends. Uh, sh Flip? Flip has access to my uh, account to upload things. Flip, you, you're going to have to go in here and you're going to have to apologize. Do you guys see this? I'm not going to lie to you. Dude, I got freaked out there for a second. I'm not going to lie to you. When I saw my name pop up three times, my blood pressure went through the roof. And then I saw it was about Bruce Lee. And I immediately was like, my, my boy Flip is off the rocker. I think I'm going to have to, I, I think I'm going to have to read through the shape of methodology. I already opened it once. I'm going to have to read through this and look at this and try to understand all of this because it, it, it could be interesting. It minimally could be interesting. And maybe I want to adopt some of it. Anyways, the name is the prime gen. I, that was way too long of a name thing. Flip, this is going to be a nightmare. To, flip, hey, remember, thank your boy Flip.